Good evening, Tony Dottino. It's Friday, April the 1st. We have gone through the first quarter of the year, and I finished my March month up here in the New York Northeast area. So uh, a little bit colder here. I miss some of the warm uh, temperatures and weather in Florida, and I'll be heading back to Florida next week. But in the meantime, let me talk to you about this conference that I was at and the things that I noted that were most important and things that I want people to retain and at least remember. Uh, it was a really exciting day to watch a group of executives really go at what their leadership skills needed to be. And the first thing that was interesting is one of the uh, opening remarks were, we need to bring more soft skills into our organization to be able to achieve the results and the re uh, numbers that we need for our uh, financial performance. And that was uh, uh, empowering right there. In fact, we need to bring in soft skills. And so my first comment to them in my talk was the soft skills are crucial, but the soft skills will be the hardest that you ever have to implement and bring through the whole organization. And so the whole issue of how do we make sure that people are hearing and retaining the things that are most important to us as it relates to the skills that this workshop was basically trying to focus on and build on. One of them being feedback and being able to create a communication network where people are transparent in their conversations. And I always like to say, if you've got a truly transparent organization, then people will say that which needs to be said to the person that needs to hear it in the moment it needs to be spoken. And so feedback to that degree is an essential lifeline to an org success. And then is that feedback retained? So now we get back to memory. As you're communicating with people what the primary goals of the organization are, the first thing that each of these executives needed to think about is how are they going to communicate to people so that they would retain and recall the organization's priorities in their day-to-day -day work actions. And so looking at soft skills, well, would one first realize that memory, uh, memory is a verb and it's not a noun, and that memory skills are teachable. And we demonstrate that through 22 years of hosting and running the USA Memory Championship and looking at the lives of people that have come through that and have gone on to fantastic professional careers that they never thought possible. So Jim Carroll, uh, who was an associate of our USA Memory Championship uh, organization, did a fantastic job of demonstrating to the executives the use of memory and the fact that if we want an organization to be successful, we've got to be able to retain and recall crucial information. And he did a series of demonstrations on how you can then take those skills and apply them in a very pragmatic and practical way fired up the audience with his demonstrations, absolutely just uh, just lit them up. And then I had the pleasure of following him to say, okay, from what Jim has shared with you, now what can we take from that? And the first thing I wanted them to realize is Jim is the walking model, I call him the holy grail of neuroscience because in the first slide that I put up, I talked about the fact that we have infinite capacity. When you think of our brain, and the neurons and the axons and the dendrites all coming together in hundreds of billions of neurons with the firing of a dendritic, uh, an axon connecting to a dendrite, we've got thousands and thousands of connections that ultimately turn into infinity. And so our thinking capacity to retain and then recall and create is infinite. And Jim was a fantastic demonstration of that particular principle to the whole audience of what he's been able to do, which then blew up the second myth. Jim started on his marching career at age 50. He's now 69. Well, aren't we supposed to lose our memories and aren't we supposed to get make it harder to learn as we get older? And here's Jim learning and learning and learning and he's proving more and more and more on what his mental capacities are by creating himself mental challenges and mental learning each and every day and each and every year. So he proves to the world that if you continue to learn and put mental challenges, 
through your mind and through your day-to-day -day habits, it's amazing what focus, self-esteem, and creativity can come from that. And is this not important for a group of executives to realize that their employees, from, from themselves right through their management team to their front line, that their employees have an amazing ability and an amazing gift if we just learned and taught them and educated them in how to do that. And so Jim was very inspiring to the leadership team and opening up that possibility that if you had the passion and the belief that you could, and then you had the energy, the positivity, as we call it, to believe that you could and you can, just imagine, just imagine for a minute, any organization that could go from top to bottom that had the belief, had the energy, the passion, and the skills to be able to achieve just about anything they wanted. As long as they had the right focus and the right energy and desire. Because our brain figures it out. And I liken that to what I see uh, when I go visit living in Windermere, Florida. We take a, a monthly trip over to the Space Center. And when I look at what we do with these rockets that they send off to the uh, to, to the space station, they send it to orbit. Now we're looking to go to the moon again. We look at going to Mars. And I look at all of the complexity of what needs to happen for that to, to become reality. Why can't we take those, those disciplines and those same skills and apply them to day-to-day -day work activities in different organizations, and be it retail, be it in hospitals, be it in manufacturing? Because we have this infinite creativity. The third thing that I thought was important in, in terms of the session is being giving people feedback. And as one executive was so bright to say, people don't come to work to make mistakes. People come to work to do a good job and to do things that are helping the organization move forward. And all they want to do is be recognized for that at times. They don't need to be you know, patted on the back every day, but occasionally to recognize them for the work that they do and get to be appreciated. Their opinion does count and they do make a difference. And so we had a good conversation over the whole notion of how do you give people feedback that has integrity, but then can be given at a point where it doesn't offend people but in fact, brings them forward in a growth plan. And so the thing I taught them about that is, if we agree in a relationship, if we agree on what successful outcomes are, then there's the spot you start with for feedback. And if we agree on out outcomes, then the conversation that, that comes to feedback says, and based on what we've agreed to achieve and what our outcomes are, here are some things we're doing that are helping us grow and meet those outcomes. Boy, these are good things, and we should keep doing these. If we aren't reaching those outcomes, and here are some of the things that are compromised. To move ourselves into making adjustments that will help us get closer to what we agreed we were trying to achieve. And so my message to the executive team was all feedback is positive because we need to know when we're getting closer to our goals and we need to know when we're moving further away. So we need both of those so that we could do more of the good and less of the bad. That was the essence of my talk. It is Friday, April 1st, and this was not a full joke here tonight. This is my closing of the week. I will be back on Monday and then Tuesday off back off to Windermere, Florida. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the uh, NCAA games on Saturday night. Hope your team does well, and we'll see you on Monday.